Hi everybody. Um, today we're going to start a new series. This is going to be uh, totally dedicated to um, databases. Um, more specifically, we're going to be using the uh, MySQL database, um, also pronounced MySQL. Um, here's their website. Uh, you can get a lot of information from here. It's also a great reference tool and you can download uh, different versions of MySQL here too as well. In order to do this tutorial along with me, uh, you have to have your database hosted somewhere. In, in my case, um, I host with a company, a uh, pretty well-known company in the hosting world uh, called HostGator. Uh, I believe Brandon hosts here too. Uh, I've referred uh, tons of clients here. In fact, I have a resell hosting plan with them that I offer to my clients for, for dirt cheap as well. I've loved them. Their uh, support's great. Um, but uh, moving on, you can, you know, get a plan with them. I believe one of the cheapest plans starts at about $4 a month if you order it for three years. And uh, you should be able to get um, at least one database. Yeah, you can get unlimited databases with that plan. So that's great. Um, the other method would be to install a server on your own machine. I, I'd say probably the easiest way to do so would be to install uh, an Apache server. And there's a website, uh, apachefriends.org, where you can download their XAMPP uh, software. And what this will do is it will uh, install um, a whole package of tools here the uh, PHP MyAdmin, um, MySQL, the Apache server, PHP and pair support, uh, and so on. As far as I can tell, it's, it's probably the easiest way to set up a server. If you're trying to set up an Apache server on your own, uh, it, it can be quite a headache, so you might as well let these guys do it for you, especially if you're a beginner. For this series, however, we're going to be using. Um, my hosting account um, and we can access our hosting account through cPanel here uh, this is my uh, reseller hosting company I call it help us host cPanel is a pretty pretty common tool um, when you get a hosting service there's a couple other uh, popular ones out there Plesk and uh, I believe Virtuoso but uh, I'm pretty comfortable with cPanel. Uh, you have all your stats for your uh, site here and such. A um, bunch of options here for mail, um, files and FTP accounts, uh, logs and, and more stats, uh, domain name, stuff like that. But anyways, we're going to get into databases here. and. Um, assuming you're going to be looking at the same thing I've got here, we're going to go to databases and click on MySQL databases. And this is going to bring up uh, a page that allows you to create and modify databases, users, uh, etc. And what we're going to do is first create a database. And we'll call this simply basics. And uh, there are some rules to naming databases. Uh, cPanel does a pretty good job of yelling at you if you do something wrong. For instance, if I try to put another underscore here, uh, I'll get a nasty message. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll click Create Database. And it'll tell you that it was successful. And we can go ahead and click Go Back. And it'll take us back to the previous screen. Uh, the next step is if you if you haven't already you need to create a database user so we'll go ahead and do that now so we'll put in the database name or the uh, excuse me the username we'll just call this sample and you put in your password I do recommend a pretty strong password for databases uh, there's nothing more upsetting and annoying than uh, having your database hacked um, thank you hackers 
anyway, so one thing to note really quick uh, is that our database name here is actually going to be not just sample, or excuse me, our username is not going to be just sample, it's going to be dnet underscore sample. dnet is my hosting username. And that's how uh, HostGator keeps keeps these users separate by adding this. So no one else is going to have this prefix to the username besides us. Uh, if you're doing this on a local machine on your own server, uh, you won't have to worry about that there. You can make your usernames whatever you want. Same goes for the database name, as you see here. Uh, moving on. We need to create this user, so we'll go ahead and click Create User. We're going to get this message saying it was successful. And let's go ahead and click Go Back. And let's scroll on down to the bottom of the page. The uh, last step uh, in putting a database together is we need to attach a user to it, or in this, as they put it, add a user to the database. So we'll select our user, which is Sample, and our database, which is Basics and we'll click add. Alright, and before we uh, successfully add this user to the database we have to set the uh, user's privileges and with these privileges they are associated with the database and the user together but the user themselves don't keep these privileges um, it is only when using this database. So you can set different privileges for the same user for different databases if that uh, makes sense. Uh, now, for this example, we're going to go ahead and just check all privileges. Um, and this is fine, I guess, if you're just developing. But once your site's live, you, you should probably come through and uncheck a few of these. And that'll help in the event that uh, someone has hacked into your database. Uh, it'll help doing certain things to your database maliciously. And you would also, if you're going to create... Uh, usernames for uh, team members working on a project as well you might limit their their access to uh, anyway let's go ahead and, and click make changes and it's gonna tell us that uh, it was successfully added to the database and instead of going back let's click home up at the top left here and we'll scroll back down to the databases section um, the the tool we're going to be using to work in these databases is PHP my admin so let's go ahead and click this and it's going to open this up in another tab which is kind of handy and when we start the uh, next part of this uh, or the next lesson in this uh, series we will go through uh, some of the basics of the PHP my admin application